It's early spring 2021 and a team of electrical engineers are working amidst the picturesque scenery of Wales Valley. Their task involves digging a trench, but soon they find themselves breaking into a strange tunnel hidden beneath the ground. This structure is on any of their maps or plans, meaning it's taken the world curse totally by surprise. It seems that this eerie tunnel has been forgotten for untold centuries. The Y Valley's natural beauty was certainly on the minds of the Western Power Distribution Team. They had been dispatched to a customer's home to install a new power line pole, but the electricians wanted to preserve the landscape as much as possible while digging. The discovery of the tunnel, therefore, threw everyone on a loop. Alan Gore, the technician in charge of the job, spoke about the discovery in an article published on the WPD's official website. He said, before work began, all the usual checks and permissions were in place thanks to Wayleave officer Luke Summers. Nothing had shown up on any of her drawings or records to indicate that there was anything unusual about this site. He revealed, we needed to move the existing wooden pole and underground a span of cables because if we used any angle stay on the new pole, it would impede walking on a footpath there. And the thought of creating an eyesore in an area of such physical beauty would have been unthinkable to the team. The Y Valley has been credited with kickstarting Britain's early tourism industry. That's because the area is home to more castles than any other place in the UK, meaning that it's rich with history. In 1971, it was officially designated as an area of outstanding natural beauty, and the landscape is still visited regularly by tourists today. One of the main selling points for the area is the absolute gorgeous river scenery. The famous White War, a two-day boat ride along the river from Ross to Chepstow, was first held by the Reverend John Egerton in 1750. With that, the stories of the wonders of the valley soon spread far and wide. This increased profile naturally led to more visitors, and soon public tour boats were traveling up and down the river. And of course, all of these people needed boatmen and guides, as well as somewhere to stay at the night. They also needed food and drinks while they were in the area. The effort to satisfy these needs helped the tourism industry form. The White Valley landscape is made up of rolling hills and ancient forests, not to mention older cliffs and gorges scattered around the place. The land in some parts has been formed into an interesting pattern. Thanks to the ways that the region's natural resources have been exploited over the centuries, the valley hosts a small community amidst large fields, with churches and monasteries also found in remote locations. In the latter part of the 16th century, the valley streams were used to run large water wheels. Copper, tin, iron factories were formed, which made use of charcoal created with timber sourced in the area. Part of the Y Valley, the Tintern Wire Works became the single biggest industrial business in Wales in 1600. Hundreds of individuals called this factory their workplace. The Wire River was actually what helped commerce boom here as materials and goods could easily be transported up and down the waterway. Associated businesses such as shipbuilders and vessel repair enterprises therefore sprung up in the area too. In the 1870s, the Y Valley Riverway became operational, leading to a new wave of tourism coming to the area. In 1880, then Tintern Station welcomed thousands of tourists who wanted to visit the Tintern Abbey Monastery. Here, they hoped to watch the rising of the harvest moon to the building's framed rose window. Tintern Abbey is located close to the border separating Wales from England. The monastery's origins go as far back as 1131, though it has been in ruins for the better part of 500 years. In 1909, the monument was designated as a special significance to the nation of Wales and was purchased by the royal family. The abbey was created by Walter de Clare, the Lord of Chepstow. To fill its walls, he imported French monks, who lived in accordance with the doctrine known as the Rule of St. Benedict. Life in the Abbey, therefore, consisted of prayers, obedience, and work, all conducted in the absolute silence. The monks would practice chastity and rejected money, preferring to live a life of poverty. In the early 14th century, many Welsh monasteries were destroyed during the wars of Edward II. Tintern Abbey, however, survived this period unscathed. Most historians believe this is due to the fact that it was located in an isolated area that was difficult to get to. It is believed that Edward II actually visited the site in 1326, even stayed there for a couple of nights. History is tended to remember Edward II as a man of culture. He reportedly enjoyed music and dancing as well as theater. He was also a keen blacksmith and he loved to thatch. This separated him from his father Edward I, who mostly was remembered as a wager of war. It's not outside the realm of possibility then that Edward II personally saw it that the Tintern Abbey was not destroyed. The Abbey managed to stay afloat during the Black Death Plague of the 14th century and even survived serious financial difficulties in the early 15th century. 
Sadly though, in 1535, Henry VIII enacted his first act of suppression, which closed down any house of worship whose yearly turnover was less than 200 pounds. Tintern's annual income was 192 pounds, which was enough to make it the wealthiest monastery in the entire country of Wales. But it was still dissolved. In 1549, the buildings of Abbey came to be owned by the Earl of Worcester, Henry Somerset. He ordered the disassembly of the building's roofs because they were full of lead, which was worth a lot of money at the time. To this day, the Abbey is roofless. In the wake of the Reformation, the Abbey's ruins became a place of great romance to tourists and poets of the era. In fact, the ruins grew to be viewed as a beautiful highlight of the Wye River Valley. During this period, the Abbey was the property of the Duke of Beaufort, who felt connected to the site and wanted to preserve it. In 1972, famed painter J.M.W. Turner arrived at the site. He was only 17 years old at the time. He drew some wonderful sketches while viewing the Abbey, which became the basis for this famed 1795 watercolor painting, Tintern Abbey. This was later displayed inside the London Royal Academy of Arts, where Turner studied. Perhaps the most famous poem associated with the Abbey is William Wordsworth's line composed a few miles about Turnturn's Abbey, 13 July 1798. While the poet doesn't make mention of the Abbey in the body of the piece, it's understood that it was inspired by a walking tour he took with his sister in the Wye Valley. The experience supposedly left him struck by the area's beauty. Returning to the modern day, and WPD team Gore revealed, shortly after the excavation work began, the digging team made the extraordinary discovery of what they initially thought to be a cave. Naturally, the team ceased digging while a call was placed to Gore and Summers. They were needed at the site because it was their call on how the team was supposed to proceed. This find was a lot more intriguing than anything else that Gore had previously discovered while on the job. As he reflected, I've been involved in other excavations where we have discovered old wells and cellars not shown on any plants. Gore went on, further investigation revealed it was a man-made tunnel around four feet in height. The tunnel system was tucked away underneath a footpath running parallel to the Angiti Brook and seemed to follow the brook's route along the valley. It may have been unknowingly walked on for centuries. Armed with the knowledge that the team had made a discovery of some potential historical significance, the team's manager, Bradley Griffiths, placed an important call. It was the COD, the Historical and Cultural Heritage Branch of the Welsh Government. It sent one of his officers to the site to have a look. Gore revealed that the officers were very impressed with the sheer scale of the tunnel and quite fascinated to see it. Gore said in his opinion it could possibly be linked to ironwork ruins previously discovered in the area. Indeed, the WPD said Tintern Abbey's ruins were only a hop, skip, and jump from where the tunnel was discovered. The area has a lot of ruined forges, furnaces, and ironworks. It therefore stands to reason that the tunnel construction could have been connected to the abbey somehow. The mystery tunnel's discovery shocked not only the WPD team and COD, but also the local residences. None of them had any clue that it was there. Even the local government authorities were none the wiser. The tunnel didn't show up on a single ordnance survey map from the last 300 years. It was a true secret. The WPD and court put their heads together and came up with a plan they'd stop work entirely. No one wanted to risk damaging the tunnel in any way, especially as archaeologists were going to be brought in to investigate it. A viable alternative would need to be found for moving the customer's pole. Gore explained, for now, we have backfilled the trench and reinstated everything as we are planning an alternative route for the customer. In all in all, he was keenly aware that upcoming archaeological work could go on for an extremely long time. He admitted it could take years before investigations are concluded. As for the functions served by the tunnel, perhaps a clue can be found in a similar discovery in Poland. On February 7, 2021, the first news website broke the news that two tunnels had been found running underneath the Schiess in Tuchel Castle. Cavers had made the find while exploring a network of World War II-era passage beneath the city. These passages, believed to have been built by the Nazis, ran for around 885 feet. But after that point, the concrete tunnels gave way to bricks and motor. Samples were sent away for analysis, and it was confirmed that this area of the tunnel network dated back to the medieval days. Experts believed theorized that the medieval tunnels were built to create a drain for groundwater. Ashley Crowey of the Ancient Origins website wrote that the tunnel in the Wye Valley was perhaps built for the same reasons. After all, the WPD Alan Gore did reveal that the tunnel lines up with the Engiti Brook body of water. Interestingly, the archaeologist James Wright also posted a theory on the official website of his consultancy company, Triscal Heritage. 
and an intriguing turn of events, he took umbrage with the discovery being labeled as a secret medieval tunnel in the media. To him, the answer to the tunnel's origin was likely much more prosaic. Wright noted that two old grinding mills lie immediately east of the area where WPD were working. The Chapel Wire Mill and the Middle Tang Mills were active in the 1700s and early 1800s. An 1821 inventory claimed that there were two water wheels at the mill, but scholars could never say how water reached the wheels. Wright couldn't be certain that these tunnels were used to get water to those mills, but he felt it was far more likely explanation that the tunnels being related to Tintern Abbey. He claimed the monastery is actually more than 3,000 feet away from the tunnel's discovery, contradicting what the WPD said. With that in mind, why would the monks choose to get their water from such a long distance away? Some observers have suggested the passageway wasn't used for ferrying water, but rather was part of a network of escape tunnels. Again though, Wright picked holes in this theory. For one thing, why a group of Cistercian monks in such a remote location would ever need a secret tunnel? Piggybacking on this idea, Wright asked how the construction of the tunnel would have been concealed by monks. He also didn't know how they would have kept the tunnel dry and ventilated, nor how would have they have kept up its regular maintenance. If anything, Wright believed it would have been an impossibly physically demanding task for the monks. In the end, perhaps the reason the discovery was labeled as a secret medieval tunnel is simply because it sounds more fascinating to people. It's fun to imagine elaborate explanations for these secret subterrain areas, filling them with spooky history and folklore. But in reality, the truth is probably much more realistic. Perhaps Anthony Clayton said it best in his book, Secret Tunnels of England. He acknowledged that tunnel discoveries parking the imagination into storytelling. But these are more often than not fanciful misinterpretations of shallow mines, sewers, drain tunnels, underground conduits, or closely adjacent undercrafts and cellars with vaults and arches.